to fit and how big a boost would he be if he's available? No, Tariq won't be fit. Um, he's had a little setback um, this week, so um, disappointing for, for him. We need to just get to the bottom of that, but um, he won't be available for the weekend. What sort of setback? Well, and how yeah, long at the moment we're just trying to get to the bottom of it, but it's a problem with his hamstring. Um, so we, um, yeah, he's seen a specialist. We need to just find out really but uh, but at the moment all we know is that he's, he's not available for the weekend same as Adam Webster same as Solly March um, Aaron Connolly had a slight problem today uh, just a spasm in his back so we need to see how he is tomorrow apart from that we're, we're, we're okay from the, the previous match You wanted to um, seek clarity for events against West Brom did you did you get what you were looking for? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it, uh, it, it is what it is. Um, there's nothing we can do now. It's, it's one of those things that, um, that happens. We move forward, just try and get, get on with the next match. It's part of, it's part of football. There's, it's an unfortunate one because it, it didn't probably look the best as it was, as, as it was uh, folding, folding out. But um, we can't do anything about it now. We, we move on. You've obviously had two very frustrating games, haven't you? So how can you use that ahead of the Leicester game? Yeah, frustrating in terms of the results, absolutely. I'd probably th say three three frustrating games. Uh, Aston Villa, we drew nil-nil, but, but felt that we, we could have done, uh, we could have won the match. And then Crystal Palace and, and West Brom. So results-wise, um, frustrating. Performance-wise, a lot of positives. So we have to... Uh, we have to focus on those. Of course, always looking at, at um, what we can do to, to, to improve, uh, as, as is always the case. So um, the boys are in good, good spirits, good, good place. Um, disappointed, of course, with the results we've got, but again, know the challenge of the league and are, are up for it. And tell us about your penalty taker. Should you get one? Who's going to step up? Well, I won't. Uh, I won't announce it now, but um, that's something, of course, we need to uh, uh, think about between now and the game. But of the two that missed the other day, and then of course Mope from before, have they all kind of, you know, they've all got the, the bottle, the confidence to be able to do it if asked? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't. I don't doubt that. It's just for us to to, to make the decision about who's going to take. But I've got uh, confidence in all, all of the players. Whoever whoever gets the opportunity will 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 take it on. When you look at your fixtures, obviously Leicester, Southampton, Newcastle, it, it's kind of a key couple of weeks for you, isn't it? You could almost end this conversation about relegation, can't you, with these next three games? Well, I I think all you can do in this job is is focus on the next match. And uh, the next match is Leicester. Team pushing for a Champions League spots, so we have to uh, we have to be ready for that challenge. That's what we're doing. Um, Just find. Sorry, go on, carry no, on. No, that, that's it. So, and then once we play that, then then we'll focus on the next one. Just finally, um, a lot of talk today about Premier League and which managers will be letting certain players go and play internationals. Will, will you be allowing some of your internationals to go off? I mean, Klopp said anybody that has to come back and isolate for 10 days won't be allowed to go. Obviously, FIFA are, are, being, are handing the decision to Premier League clubs. You've got sort of what Percy Tau in the South African squad. You've got a couple of guys that might be called up for Colombian squad, Ecuador. What's your decision making process around this, will you let internationals go if they have to then isolate for 10 days? I think we'll take, I think we're going to speak about it over the next few days, upcoming week, maybe a bit, bit more clarity from from FIFA or whoever else can, can give us that information. But um, yeah, we'll take the decision of the club, what's right for the, for the player and, and for us, I guess, and what we can do. It, it must be a good thing though that you've got the power to make that decision because normally it's not it's just FIFA's decided given the extraordinary circumstances mm. to allow yourself who can and can't go yeah well it seems sensible to me in terms of um, 
what we've just come out of to 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 have that type of uh, movement and then and then to to have a 10 day quarantine doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense but um like i said we'll speak about it next week and and then we'll know for sure then okay, thank you thank you hi graham um familiar story in the uh, game against west brom created plenty of chances couldn't put them away is that a big concern? Or are you happy that you're still creating a lot of opportunities? Because for teams down the bottom, that's normally the big issue, not looking like they're going to score. Again, I think every every team in football, most teams in football have, have certain challenges, certain problems. They, 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 and they'll come and go and you fix things and you solve things and then you have another problem. Uh, you know, I saw Manchester United haven't scored for three games, and and that's Manchester United. You know, Tino Werner at 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 Chelsea with the resources they haven't scored for 14 matches in the Premier League. That the, the notion that just to to score is is easy is is obviously wrong. Um, I, I think we're we're playing well. Um, we're doing a lot of things well. We need to carry on that and try to improve because. Um, Football is uh, so good at um, at, uh, at maybe not getting the rewards. You just have to keep you have to keep working. That's how it is. You can't feel sorry for yourself. Try to get better and um, focus on the positives. Understand the challenge that you face. I saw after the game you said that you just need to stay calm at the moment. I guess there's no sense of any panic at the moment, given the position in the table and recent results. Well, I don't think it's panic. It's just the fact that um, we, we have to understand that if you have a couple of bad results, then yeah, it's frustrating. It doesn't. Uh, it, it, it surely impacts your position in the table. But at the same time, we need to understand there's a lot of points to play for. Um, we're doing a lot. We're doing a, a lot. A lot well. We have to keep that going, and um, and at the same time, always understand the challenge of this league because. Everyone's capable of getting results. That's how it is. That's you can't have it both ways. You can't say it's the most competitive, best league in the world, and then it's easy for people to win. It doesn't make sense. So um, that's what it is, and and we accept that, and and we'll keep fighting. Um, you, you, as you say, you're playing well, probably not getting the results you deserve. But when you look at the table, Fulham inching their way closer to you. Do you feel under any extra pressure when you see the relegation zone getting that bit closer in view? Well, I think the league table, you can't look at, you know, it is what it is. It's there, isn't it? You know, so um, that's always going to be the case um, when the opposition, other teams do stuff. But the reality is you've got to solve the problem yourself. You can't rely on what other people are doing. You can't hope that other people don't win. You've got to get the points yourself. And we've got that ability to do that. Um, we believe that we can do that and now it's just a case of, of doing it. I can sit here and talk all day, but the reality of it is we we uh, we need to score one more goal than the opponent because if you don't do that, you don't deserve to win. That's football. Uh, no matter how well you play, the game's about scoring and, and we haven't done that um, well enough the last couple of uh, two or three games. So that's uh, clearly something we can improve. Just finally from me, Leicester present a very different type of challenge to the one you would have faced against uh, West Brom and Albion. Do you prefer playing a team set up like Leicester to, to one like West Brom who, who sort of sit deep? I don't have any preference. It's, it's football. Um, you know that everybody, and that's the beauty of it, everybody brings their own style, their own problems, challenges, opportunities to the game. And um, in the Premier League, whatever anybody decides to do, they normally do it quite well. And, and Leicester do what they do very well. So, uh, you know, they're pushing for the Champions League. Brennan's done a great job there. Um, so it's, uh, it's going to be a tough match for us. Thanks, Graham. Cheers. Hi, Graham. Hi, Ian. How are you? Good, yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Um, Looking back on it, how frustrating was last Saturday with those two penalty misses? I mean, as a, as a non-football man, I never understand how, how a professional football can miss a penalty. It's missed two in one game. Well, it, it was frustrating because we conceded a goal. It's frustrating because we, we maybe didn't start as well as we would like in the first period of the game. 
uh, frustrating that we had probably more opportunities than the opponent in, in open play. And then frustrating that, um, yeah, like you said, we, we, we missed a couple of penalties. So um, I think the, the overall feeling was frustration, but at the same time needing to go, OK, we need to stay calm. Like I said, after the game, we need to take stock. We need to um, remember the things that we've done well and focus on those. I'm lucky enough to see you play a lot this season and, and last season as well. Um, and you play some, some great stuff. Would you rather sometimes play a little bit less well and have more points on the board? Or, or is the philosophy everything? You know what I'm getting at. Well, <laughs> people say, I'm not, I'm not, it's hard to say we'll play badly and win. You know, that's the strategy. It's hard to say that as a coach. You know, you, you, you want to try and improve. You want to try and get better. You want to try and... Um, uh, but, but at the same time, no matter what, we're all the same. No matter what we try to do, no matter how we do it, we're all doing the same thing, which is to try to win the game. Um, and, and as I understand it in football, there's no absolute right and there's absolutely no ro wrong way of doing it. We all make our choices, whether it's how many passes, or whether it's pressing, whether it's long ball, whether it's set plays, whatever it is. Um, the, the, the challenge is you've got to make your choice work. And, um, you know, at the moment, we, we've, we, we, we've, we're playing well, but we haven't managed to turn those performances into the points that you need. Um, and that's where our work is. But, well, I was saying, I mean, like Pep Guardiola said you're the best English coach in, in, in the division. A lot of people love what you do in terms of the, the way you play football, the way you turn Brighton's style of play around. What I'm, what I'm saying is, are there, are there occasions where you go home and you think, you know what, I just wish we hadn't played well today, got three. But Palace, I mean, you, you battered them, but didn't get what you deserved. No, but that's why football is so great, isn't it? It's that's the that's why we love it so much, and that's why it's the the best game in the world. I think because you can in in most sports, I think the better team wins. Um, but in football, often the the better team doesn't win, and and you get that sometimes. Um, you also know that the fundamentals of the game are, regardless of how what it looks like. The fundamentals are you have to score one more goal than the, op the opponent, and we haven't done that uh, well enough the last three matches. So um, we have to accept that. Um, but if you, but I don't think you can sit there and, uh, and say, well, if you just do this, then our results are going to improve. I don't think it's as simple as that. So we have to just try our, our our way, and we have to work with the players and do something that we believe in, and keep and keep working. Just a couple more. Firstly, on Leicester. Um, Jamie Vardy, is it, if you stop him, is it too simplistic to say, if you stop him, you stop Leicester? I would say so, yeah, it is uh, too simplistic to say that because um, they've got, you know, fantastic players. Although, of course, Jamie is a, uh, a, a Premier League legend of a striker. So um, I think that's, you know, that's fair to say. But... I think the way Leicester play, it's a it's a team effort. There's a team there's a team uh, function. They've got players that can score from all over the pitch. So um, yeah, we 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 know that it's not just a one man show. That's for sure. And last one, the international break this month. You've already been asked about it. Would you prefer it if the decision was taken out of your hands? Would you prefer it if the FA or UEFA or whoever they, they cancel the fixtures or somebody made the decision? rather than individual clubs having now to make this decision about when their players go off? Yeah, I think, I think instinctively I would say probably that makes sense because of where we've come from and uh, the situation we've just, we're just coming out of and, and things around quarantine. I think um, it it's, sounds like at a level that, that should be made above the clubs, but if that's not the case, then I guess the clubs have to make the decision. And like I said, we'll try and do that of the next few days and, and make the right decisions. Top man. Good luck, Graham. Good to see you again. Cheers, and you. Thank you. Hi there, Graham. Um, I know you're not going to dwell on on last weekend, but in terms of the referees, do you think miking them up might be helpful in the future as they do in rugby and, uh, and other leagues around the world to, hit, sorry, to be able to hear the conversation? Um, 
I'm not sure. I mean, in, in fairness, I think they tr they tried to c communicate on the on the side through the fourth official. Um, yeah, it's something to look at, but I, I, I'm not sure. I think it's in that particular instance, it was just a a, a bit of an error that happened, uh, and there was a bit of confusion. But uh, yeah. Um, not maybe the best um, viewing thing to look at in terms of how the process went. Whether whether the whether the, the mic would make any difference, I suppose in a, in a way it depends depends where the mic's going to go, who's going to hear it. But um, in general, I just trust the referees and the light and, and the fourth official to make the right decision. Okay. Or our um, decision. Yeah. yeah. Um, you made uh, you gave uh, Jakob Moda his Premier League debut. How pleased are you with the way that he's been uh, progressing? I know it was a sort of short cameo performance, mm. but um, he got involved straight away. Yeah, no, he's been. We can see his attributes in training. He's um, he's he's doing well. He's he's adapted quite well and um, fits fits into the team and the group. So he's a, he's an option. I think when we're he, he's got a, a good strike on him, good good long distance pass, can switch play well. So um, that, that's probably why we try to get him on the pitch late in the game. Um, so yeah, no, we're, we're happy with him. And, and just finally on, on Leicester City, what have you learned? I mean, they're familiar foes for you now, having played them in the FA Cup as well. Um, you're yet to get a point off them uh, or, or progress in that competition. What have you learned about coming up against them in the last four fixtures? That they're... Um, Individually, very, very talented players, but then collectively they're organised really well. Uh, Brendan, as I've said, has done a fantastic job there and they can build their attacks, they can play on the counter-attack, they can defend deep, they can press you high. As you'd expect from a team that is um, pushing for the Champions League spots, they can they can do all, all things on the on the pitch required to, to, to get results. They had to, you know, they had to fight a Burnley last night, but they could also play and create chances. So there's, there's, um, yeah, there's everything there that you need, I think, to be a top team.